humanity evolved in geotrain. <clears throat> so a 2D uh, space strapped around a sphere where the speed of a message was the speed of a horse or somebody running or of a boat. And for hundreds of thousands of years, that's how humanity from our ancestors became what we were and what we uh, are. And now we're becoming something different. All the choices people make about who to follow and what to like and what YouTube video to watch, all of these condition uh, algorithms and they form connections between individuals. All of this now happens on the internet without respect to physical geography or geospace. It happens in cyber social terrain, which we think is the primary domain of human activity now. This is not a map of reality. It's a map of, of a de jure kind of arrangement. And if one really wants to think carefully about the kinds of, of places where you're going to see geopolitical pressures in the years ahead, look at, I would say, two maps. One map would be maps that show territorial control by states that extended beyond where their current boundaries are. I made the reference to China. The second is to look, look at maps where there's a tension between the de facto and the de, de jure arrangements. When we look at people on the move, I want to just lay out the landscape for you a bit. We saw the images of those refugees, of those people on the move earlier. Um, but we are facing an unprecedented refugee and displacement crisis around the world. 70 million people are displaced by conflict, by persecution or disaster. This is more than at any point since World War II. Government land administration systems are not working for most people. Why? Because they have obsolete and outdated land administration systems. There's a lack of technology and human resources. Corruption, bureaucracy, the cost. Um, and fundamentally, one of the biggest issues is lack of updated local data. The threats have certainly evolved, right, to be crossing borders, cyber, ISIS, climate, you know, you name it, drugs, criminals, they're crossing borders, and yet the way we practice our diplomacy has, is, is quite siloed and quite, you know, it would be anathema for the ambassador to Germany to travel, you know, to France and do official business, and yet, and yet um, I think more of those collaborations and conversations need to be happening. And so we need to broaden, I think, the, the border-based perspectives of the people doing the work of diplomacy. We can't really define success in humanitarian mapping unless that data and the results of those analysis and those maps actually result in policy decisions. So really, there's four components, I would argue, that, that kind of def make up the milieu of, of how we think about the structure of this, this revolution. And we know that the technology and the people are all gonna to continue to grow and change. What does that mean for our policy and our institutions? Are we ready to, to deal with this? Do we have the leadership that's smart enough on the tech and the data to actually uh, essentially get torque to the wheels? Are we gonna be able to make smarter and better decisions um, with all of this data? And at National Geographic, we believe in the power of science exploration, storytelling, and education to illuminate and protect the world. And that world, the, the, the two key words in that really for me are illuminate and also storytelling. So, you know, when people think about National Geographic, they think about um, the big, bold, beautiful photography and film and some of the writing that we produce. But what they often don't know about is the work we do to empower others to tell their own stories. So I'm going to just spend a few minutes this morning and talk to you about one of my favorite programs. It's my baby. It's called PhotoCamp. And PhotoCamp has been going now for over a decade. And the basic premise is, is pretty simple. PhotoCamp is empathy disguised as photography. Because if you can understand that your story is important and everyone else's story is important, then you're usually a more empathic person. The human story and the environmental story are very much intertwined. Because this story that is coming out from the Stockholm Resilience Center about radical ocean futures, 2050, the scenarios and pathways for going forward, is telling us that if we neglect our ocean, if we continue to use it as a trash bin, if we continue to use it as a storage bin for our carbon dioxide, we will soon be in the um, shoes of this last fisher who's just caught his last fish. 
The most recent IPCC report, special report on oceans and the cryosphere, have told policymakers, suggested politely, I should say, in diplomatic speak, uh, that it is time to get our act together, that we need to have more coherent management institutions, we need to have protected areas, we need to reduce the pressures, the level of footprint on our oceans, and we need to act soon meaning now, meaning 20 years ago. If we are actually to preserve and restore our countries and our planet's great natural heritage, we need to think beyond boundaries. We need to protect wildlife habitats across boundaries. We need to avoid erecting barriers to wildlife movement along boundaries. The basic premise of the Rewilding Institute and Wildlands Network is that we need to protect habitat connections at a large scale. We need to restore keystone species, particularly top carnivores, and we need to restore degraded habitats wherever possible. More and more of the scientific community feels that we need to protect at least half of Earth's terrestrial and aquatic eco ecosystems if we are to preserve the full range of biological diversity. That the U.S. must lead in the transatlantic alliance in rein by reinforcing its own democratic principles and by valuing our allies. Non-engagement and going it alone does not work and will bo leave both the U.S. and Europe weak and vulnerable. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I would say that those who cannot remember their geography are also in danger of repeating it. Remember, everything that happens happens someplace, sometime. And understanding that foundational aspect of space and time is critical to success, so thank you.